So now onwards, we are going to move on to the next topic, IPv6 header comparisons with the IPv4 header. On beginning, we'll just see what are the fields that we have come across in IPv4 header. The few fields are like version, IHL means internet, header, length, and type of service, total length, identification, flags, fragment offset, time clean, protocol, header checksum, source address, destination address, options, and padding. Generally, IPv4 headers are of 20 byte size, and if there is any need for options to be included other than the standard size of 20 bytes, they can be added so that the size of 20 bytes will be more when you add on with your options. So looking on to the IPv4 header, the first field was a version, which is the fourth version that we have seen with IPv4. So generally, this field will be assumed to be for for IPv4 headers. The next field is header size, that is header length, which will be marked as 20 if it is a standard header and if it is an options that are included with the header, then the size will be mentioned as like more than 20 within this field. The next field is type of service, that is previously set to use for the priority setting of your packets. Generally, they are used in uh, purposes like div serve and in serve, that is MPLS differentiation services. And here, each of the packets will be given some priority based on the application. So for giving this priority setting, the fields in type service will be set accordingly. Generally, the quality of service set is based on like different classes and generally expedited forwarding which will be used to minimize delay and jitter and assured forwarding that has like four classes and the three drop precedence altogether there are 12 code points used for this quality of service so in general this type of service option within IPv4 header is used to set priorities with your packets. The next field is a packet size, which is the bytes that is including header. So 20 plus the number of packets that is embedded within the header along with the header will be mentioned in the packet size. Generally, it will be limited to 64,000 which is said to be the MTU that is maximum transmission unit. The next field is the unique identifier which is used for uh, reassembling the segmented packets where, uh, coming from the source. So this can act as an ordering method for your packets. The next we have like too many fields which are said to be flags which denotes whether your packets have been fragmented before your transmission or not. So on from starting from the source, if your packets are fragmented, generally the flag F will be set, which means like which prohibits fragmentation and M means like more fragments that are set. The next field denotes offset that is the position of the fragment in multiples of 8 bytes. So if the flag M is set, which means to say the fragments are there for your packet and the offset positions are set, so which denotes the position of the uh, fragment, the both can be linked together to understand whether the packet is having fragments and if so, what is the position of the fragment within your data. The next field is time to leave. Generally, it will be in seconds and the count will be around like 255 based on networks. Or you can even have it in hops also. So uh, by default, the time to leave within a network, wired network is 255 milliseconds. 
and uh, in uh, terms of number of hops it will be set as 60 so once the router uh, get on a packet these number count will be decreased with a counter and if it sees a packet with zero value then it drops a packet the next field is a protocol which will be identifying the higher end or the other protocols that is preceding the packet header. So, for example, if you are using TCP in the transport layers or UDP, that will be numbered here as a protocol. The next field is a checksum, which will give you the uh, errors identification within the header. So, only the header will be accounted for your checksum. checksum. So the header fields will be added together to calculate the checksum and will be embedded in this field. The other fields like source address, destination address, etc. are the IPv4 addresses. And the next field that is options which are like extra bits that are added other than the 20 bytes. So they are like strict source routing fields. So that is for all routers it needs to be set loose source routing fields which means to say only few routers need to be configured for your routing record route timestamp route router alerts that is used for your igmp or reservation protocol for crossing a packet so these are some alerts that can be given as an option within your ipv4 head the last field that is padding which is added to make the data that is within your header or the header along with the payload together as a multiple of 32 bit words. So if your header along with the data is not as a multiple of 32, the padding field will be added to make it to be a multiple of 32. So looking into a IPv4 packet, we can see that the source address is 129 .88.98.94 and destination address is 129.88.38.241 and the header version is 4, header length is 20, differentiated service field have been made as an active thing so it is given as 0x00 here we uh, by default it is not given uh, with any service priority Total length that is 1500 is used as an MTU. Identification is the ID that is given to the uh, packets. Flag 0x04 is set. We have to check whether F field and M fields are set. So if it is so, we should see the offset positions. But here we can see the flag 1 offset position is made as 0. So generally the flag F will be set and M will not be set. Next, the time to leave is set as uh, 64 milliseconds. The protocol is set as TCP for the transport layer. Header checksum has been calculated and it is given. Source address, destination address, set and all are included within the header. We don't have the option for your option fields on also the padding in this type of uh, in this example now this is an example of uh, uh, diagrammatic format of an ipv6 header here the fields are like version traffic class flow label payload length next header hop limit source address and destinations so when you compare your IPv4 header with the IPv6 header, you can see the fields that are in yellow and blue colors are like retained and with given as a different name in IPv6 header and the green one which is added in IPv6 is actually newly included from your newly included when you compare it with the IPv4 and the other fields which are in red color like IHL identification flag, fragment offset, header checksum, option padding, etc. are not included in IPv6 header. So here the version denotes the same like your version 4. Traffic class is actually the name retained for type of service. The 
purpose for what traffic service have been used is similar to type of service they're giving a priority to the priority setting to the packets flow label is a new type of field that has been added which will give you a labeling to the flow rather than giving an identification so it is of a bigger length when you compare it with identification and its way of labeling is different payload length is same as the total length that is including your header along with your packets next header denotes the next header that is coming up that is a protocol that is coming up hop limit is a similar to time to leave and it will be like 255 milliseconds when you go uh, when you compare it with the ipv4 header so the purpose will be same but the name has been given in a different nomenclature source address and destination address are ipv6 addresses which are retained in the ipv6 header and the other enhancements in ipv6 headers are like a uh, few of the fields in ipv4 header has been renamed and an ipv4 header have an option field which we uh, said is like more than this 20 bytes and are not often used and can even deteriorate the router performance remarkably so for for each of the packets if ipv4 header has an option field that need to be checked and it will be an overburden for the router hence it is said to deteriorate the performance in ipv6 we have a option of using extension headers rather than the standard header so generally this replaces the optional field that is within your ipv4 the major difference is that most of the packets will not be going up for the uh, extension headers so the basic fields in ipv6 header itself will be enough for its processing and the packet that requires like more information on your network layer will be added with this additional headers and uh, will be included along with the ipv6 header on before the upper layer headers there is uh, so packets which are of no extension can be available or can have one or two extension headers so there is no limit like whether it can be included with one header one extension header field or other extension header field so it give you a flexibility to decide whether your header can be of a standard format or with one extension header or two extension headers so the extension header field within ipv6 uh, are the basic things are like we have around six extension headers hop by hop options routing fragment destination option authentication and encapsulating security payloads so these are the major extension headers which have differentiated from the options that we have in ipv4 so with this we conclude the header comparison of ipv4 and ipv6 thank you